Okay, the second fly in our class is the Black Beauty. Um, and this fly is really right along the same lines as the uh, Brassy. Um, and again, you know, this fly can be tied in a bunch of different colors. It's a Black Beauty when you tie it with uh, black thread and a copper wire rib. Um, if you tie it with a silver wire rib, it's a zebra midge. You can tie them with bead heads. You can tie them with red thread and silver wire. You can tie them with green thread and copper wire. You can tie them any color combinations that you want. Uh, the technique is all the same. Um, so this, this fly is tied on a Timco 2487. And you can see this is a curved shank hook. And I'm tying a 16 here just so it shows up well on the camera. Uh, but this has got a curved shank to it. And what this does, um, you can certainly tie brassy on this hook as well. You can tie any small midge or caddis, caddis larva pattern on, on a curved hook or a straight hook. Um, those bugs do move around. They don't have to be uh, only on one kind of hook. There's, there's options there for sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but we're going to tie this on this 2487 just for the sake of changing it up a little bit. I am going to use the same thread. Now in my book I used um, 70 denier UTC thread and that's perfectly acceptable. Um, it's a little bit flatter thread. Vivas 14 knot has, is newer than my book and I use this for a lot of stuff now. Um, this is a polyester thread but at least pretty flat, uh, particularly for me tying left handed. So um, it's going to create a nice smooth flat thread underbody or thread body on this fly so it's going to work fine. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start my thread with my short little tag end technique, just about an eye length behind the hook eye, and I'm just going to make the jam knot, and I do not dress the hook on this. I know I just told you on the brassy that almost all flies are dressed, and then we immediately broke that, that rule with the black beauty. So we're not going to dress the hook on this one. We're just going to start the thread behind the eye. Then we're going to take a piece of extra small copper wire, um, and this is extra small UTC. And I'm going to catch it the same way that we did on the brassy. So I'm going to put it in that right angle. I'm going to come over the top and catch it with a couple of turns. I'll pull that end around to my near side. I'm going to turn this so you can see it. And then I'm going to try not to pull this out this time. I'm going to draw this down to length just in front of that last thread turn. Now I'm going to wrap back over this wire. Now this wire, the reason I don't have to dress the hook is this wire is much finer. Um, if I tied a brassy without the thread underbody, um, I'd end up with a, a spot where the wire crawls and, and disrupts the shape of the body. Um, in the case of this fine wire, it doesn't have near the, near the stiffness to do that, so I'm able to get away with no thread underbody here. The other thing that that does is it's going to help me keep this fly very thin. If you look at midge larvae, they're barely thicker than the hook, so we're really trying to keep this fly as skinny as we can. Um, this is a good example right here where it's showing that thread is laying pretty flat right now. You can see it's spread out flat like a ribbon rather than round like a rope, and that's what we, how we want to keep it. So I'm going to continue to wrap back over this wire, and I just sort of maneuver this long end uh, to keep it lined up along the near side of the hook. And I'm going to wrap back about halfway down the bend, and I'll tell you a good way to, to know where to stop here is when I get my thread back there, if I pull that wire forward, it's just about even with the bottom of the hook eye. So that'll tell you where to stop. You don't want to go way down around the bend. It does make for a, a really curved looking fly, um, but the problem with it is, is you start to, to encroach on the actual bend of the hook and the hook only goes so far into the fish. So um, leave yourself some hook bend there. And once I get there, I'm going to come forward again with a smooth flat layer. Now you, see, you can see I've made a bunch of wraps in a row and that, that thread is starting to flatten out a bit for me. That's because I tie left-handed. If you tie right-handed, it may be starting to cord up, um, in which case you'll need to spin your bobbin to flatten it out. People ask me all the time, which direction do you spin it? There's only two choices. If you spin it one way and it gets tighter, spin it the other way. So rather than trying to remember some rule of thumb, just keep an eye on that twist, and if you need to eliminate it, uh, spin the bobbin. So I'll come right back up to where I started and just let my thread hang there. So now, instead of the concentric wraps with the wire that we did on the brassy, we're going to spiral wrap these, or palmer wrap them. Um, so the spiral wrap is evenly spaced turns, um, like you'd see on a barber pole. So what I'll do here is I'm going to bring this fine wire around, I'll reach around the hook point, and I'll angle that first wrap slightly forward. And I'm typically set at about seven turns. So I'm going to space these out as evenly as I can. for about seven turns. Now you could do yours with six, you could do yours with five, you could do yours with probably eight. Um, I don't like to get them too close together. You can see how that's created a nicely segmented body. Um, it seems like I'm set right at seven. It's almost always seven. I'll back up a turn of thread there. I'm going to switch the wire to my thread hand and cross the thread over behind it for two or three turns. And then with this fine wire I'm just going to hold my bobbin tight toward me here. 
I'll grab this fine wire and just pop it. It'll break right off. So we've got the body built. Um, if you tied a whip finish right there, you'd have a perfectly acceptable midge. And that's what a Miracle Nymph is, is white thread with a copper wire rib. Um, you can color the thread head with a black marker, and you'd have a Miracle, miracle midge. Um, but in this case, we're going to put a little more dubbing on there because we've been practicing the dubbing. So same, same drill as the brassy. We're going to take a tiny little pinch of black superfine. I'm going to lay it up against the thread. I'm going to twist down that anchor point and then draw the rest out. It can get a little bit thicker, but it really shouldn't be much thicker than the thread. And I'm going to use this to build a ball here at the front. You can see I can kind of work back and forth to build that up. I don't like it to get tremendously oversized. You can see how I can angle those wraps. And as I run out of dubbing, I'm going to come around just behind the hook eye. Come in with my whip finisher. About three turns there. Tie that off. And then I'll nick that thread out. Now you can see on this, and this is... You know, to my naked eye, that's not near as furry, but as I look at it on the monitor here, um, sometimes when you dub, you'll have sort of extra furry dubbing, especially when you first start. Here's a quick little trick, and you can really only do that on brassies, this trick on black, brassies and black beauties. Um, if you've got tails or wings or anything, you're going to screw it up. But what I'm going to do is take a cigarette lighter and light it and touch it to the dubbing. And you can see how that cinched that all down a little bit more tightly. So I've got just a little swelled head there, very reminiscent of a midge. Um, it's just a quick touch. Don't go crazy with it. You'll burn it all down. Um, but that is our black beauty. And again, you know, tie a dozen of them. Tie them in all sorts of colors. This is a great fly. Um, you can tie them with glass beads or tungsten beads. Um, we'll get to on the Prince Nymph how to put the beads on the hook. We'll talk about that. But um, this fly you can do, do, you know, white, red, green, darker olive, tan, um, any variety of colors. Um, any variety of wires uh, to rib. Uh, very simple fly, but some good techniques picked up in there. And again, you know, stay with me. We're going to get through this. Um, this is building techniques as we go on. Uh, the next slide we do in the class is the RS2. So that'll be where you want to go from here. And we're going to expand on that, on that a little bit as we get into that. The RS2 has got tails and an abdomen and a wing case and a thorax. So a few more parts coming. So make sure you have this stuff mastered before you go on to that. All right, get to work. I'll see you in a week.